let's start by going over exactly what we'll cover in this video. First, we'll discuss what osmosis is and how it differs from diffusion. Next, we'll examine what active transport is and why it's necessary. And finally, we'll look at specific examples of active transport in plants and animals. Let's begin with understanding osmosis. Osmosis is a specific type of diffusion that involves the movement of water molecules across a partially permeable membrane. Water moves from a region of higher water concentration to a region of lower water concentration. Another way to think about it is that water moves from a dilute solution to a more concentrated solution. This movement continues until the concentration on both sides are equal, or until pressure prevents further movement. The key difference between osmosis and diffusion is that osmosis specifically refers to the movement of water molecules across a membrane. Diffusion, on the other hand, can involve any substance. Water is constantly moving into and out of cells by osmosis. Now let's move on to active transport. Unlike diffusion and osmosis, which are passive processes driven by concentration gradients, active transport requires energy in the form of ATP. Active transport is the movement of substances from a region of lower concentration to a region of higher concentration. This means it works against the concentration gradient. This is why energy is required to work against the natural direction of movement. Why do cells need active transport? There are several reasons. Sometimes cells need to concentrate certain substances inside them even when these substances are at a lower concentration outside the cell. For example, plant root hair cells need to absorb mineral ions from the soil where these ions are present in very dilute amounts. Additionally, cells might need to remove additional substances completely, maintaining a zero concentration inside the cell. This is the case with certain toxins or waste products. Let's look at specific examples of active transport in organisms. In plants, root hair cells actively transport mineral ions from the soil into the plant. The soil solution is very dilute, containing low concentrations of ions such as nitrates, phosphates, and potassium. For plants to grow, they need to accumulate these ions in much higher concentrations within their cells. This can only be achieved through active transport. In the human digestive system, glucose is absorbed through the small intestine into the bloodstream by active transport. After a meal, glucose concentration in the gut lumen can be lower than in the blood. Against this concentration gradient, energy is used to move glucose into the bloodstream. In summary, passive processes like diffusion and osmosis allow cells to move substances along concentration gradients without using energy. Active transport enables cells to move substances against these gradients. Understanding these transport mechanisms helps us appreciate how cells and organisms maintain their internal environment and interact with their surroundings. These are essential processes for life itself. In our next episode, we will explore more about how cells are organized in organisms in the form of tissues, organs, and organ systems.